Often when you attempt problems around circuits, you are asked to find the potential difference between two points. So in this lesson, let us learn exactly that and we'll do so by taking a simple circuit and establishing the potential difference between any two randomly chosen points. So here is a circuit that has a battery with EMF E, internal resistance R and an external resistance of value capital R and we are asked to find the potential difference between points A and B or say VB minus VA where VB represents a potential at point B and VA at point A. Well, what we'll do here is not very different from what we learned in the earlier lesson. So we start at A where the potential is VA and as we move up towards B, we will add up all the gains and losses in potential. So we first encounter the battery and we can see there is a gain in potential. So we add the value of EMF to VA. Then we pass through the internal resistance of the battery. And since we are moving in the direction of the current, the potential should drop as we pass the resistor and move to the other side. So the drop in potential is IR and then we reach point B where the potential is VB and if you've added the gains and losses to VA this value should now equal VB then we get potential difference between A and B as VB minus VA is equal to EMF minus I small r well we can also find the value of I which equals EMF E divided by capital R plus small r and if we substitute the value of i in this equation what we get is vb minus va is equal to emf minus emf r upon capital r plus r which equals emf capital r upon r plus r that is capital r plus r so you see to find the potential difference between any two points start at one point and move in the circuit towards the other point and add all changes in potential algebraically. This would be the potential difference between the two points then. Okay, let us shift gears and get an understanding of power that a battery of EMF E can generate. So when a battery establishes current by doing work on a charge carrier, what is happening is that the chemical energy of the battery is getting transferred to the charge that enables it to move in the circuit and create current. And since any EMF device, like a battery here, would have an internal resistance, some energy would get wasted there. So let us see how power, current, and EMF of a battery relate through a simple equation. Well, we know that the power a battery can generate is I times V, where V is the terminal potential difference and I is the current in the circuit. And we also know that the terminal potential difference is EMF value less the potential drop across the internal resistance of the battery. So if we substitute the value of V in this equation, what we get is P is equal to I times EMF minus IR, which equals I times the EMF minus I square R, that is small r. Now we can see that this term is the rate of thermal energy dissipation in the internal resistance R or if we term this energy dissipation as PR, it equals I square R. In that case, this part of the equation or rather this expression must be the total rate of energy transfer by the battery and let us call it PEMF. So PEMF is value of energy transferred both to charge carrier and the internal resistance of the battery. So let us not attempt a problem that will help us understand the concepts a lot better. And what we have here is a circuit that has two batteries with internal resistance R1 and R2 respectively. And there is an external resistance capital R as well. And the first question is, what is current I in this circuit? So to find the answer, let us label the direction of I this way since we can see that EMF of this battery is more than that of this one and therefore this battery will control the direction of the current. But even if you for some reason did not know the EMF values, 
you could have assumed some direction and proceeded. Let us now go ahead and apply the loop rule and we'll move counterclockwise this time that is against the direction of the current starting at point A and remember you can start from any point A is a randomly chosen point. So what we get is minus E1 here since the potential drops then plus IR1 since we're moving against the direction of the current so there must be a gain in potential plus I capital R plus IR2 and finally plus E2 since there is a gain potential and this should equal zero. Well, if you're curious, you could try establishing the same equation going in the other direction and using a different starting point. But I suggest you do it after you've watched this example. So if you solve for I in this equation, what you get is this as the expression for I. And if you put the values in the equation, you find the value of I is 0 0.24 amperes or 240 milliamperes. So the next question is, what is the potential difference between the terminals of battery one? And this in a way is equivalent of asking, what is the potential difference between points A and B? Because you can see that A is at the same potential as this battery plate and B is at the same potential as this plate. Then what we can do is start at point B that is effectively the negative terminal of the battery and say the potential here is VB and add the drops and gains till we reach point A where we say the potential is VA and we do so moving in clockwise direction. So what is important for you to note is that we do not wish to find VA or VB but the difference between VA and VB that would also be the terminal potential difference for battery one. So the equation we have if we go around the loop is VB minus IR1 plus E1 is equal to VA or VA minus VB is equal to minus IR1 plus E1. And if you put the respective values, what we get is VA minus VB is equal to 3.8 volts. Now you see this is lower than the EMF of the battery. And the reason for it is that the internal resistance of the battery has caused a drop in the potential when current I pass through it. And if there was no internal resistance, the terminal potential difference would have been the same as the EMF, that is 4.4 volts. So if you like the video, do give it a thumbs up, share it with someone or just post a comment. And yes, don't forget to ring the bell below to get notifications when I publish a new video.